warning. Listening to this show may result in increased levels of inspiration, motivation, and innovation. Side effects can include the immediate urge to take massive action to build a better business and life for yourself and others. You've been warned. Welcome to Influencers Radio with your host, Jack Mize. And welcome back to another episode of Influencers Radio. Uh, you know, the fountain of youth, that is something that we have been seeking uh, probably since the beginning of time. And there is certainly no shortage um, of the overwhelming options that you see probably every second of every day somewhere you can see what's available. You can see the promises of youthful skin, whether it's, it's cosmetic surgery, whether it's, uh, makeup. It is everywhere because it is something that people are looking for answers and it's something that so many people end up being sadly disappointed in what they find. And today, my guest is someone that has really uh, dedicated a good part of her professional life, and she is passionate and driven around this subject. Today, my guest is Dr. Elizabeth Vanderveer. She is the founder and president of Vanderveer Center and Volante Skin Care. And we're going to be talking not just about, you know, what's going to make you look good, but what is going to give you something that is is going to go deeper than just the aesthetics. It's going to go deeper than just vanity. So with that, I want to welcome to Influencers Radio, Dr. Elizabeth Vanderveer. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you. It's great to be here. When I first started looking at what you're doing, because you see so much of it in a shallow level, there's there's products and services that help people with the skin, and you think about all the uh, reality TV shows and and uh, you know plastic surgery, nose job, this you know there's special magic potions that we're gonna you know take 20 years off your age. But like I said, at the top of the show, it's not just about vanity; it goes so much deeper. There are people with some very serious conditions and very serious issues with their skin that I think uh, it's one of the reasons I consider you an influencer, someone that can come in and and put something together that helps not just the, the people that want to look better. One of the things that concerns me so much as a physician is that a lot of the damage that is being done to the skin, we're causing ourselves. You know, everyone says, oh, watch out for the sun and watch out for pollution and watch out for all these big, bad, you know, agers of the skin. Well, how about what we're doing to our skin in our bathrooms every day that we're told is healthy for our skin? It's going to make it look better or be or act better. And in fact, I believe that we're causing significant harm to our skin and we're causing premature aging and a host of other problems to the skin. So that is what really bothers me and what has kept me up at night looking for a different solution to the age old problem of I want to look younger or feel better in my skin. Well, let's talk about that because, you know, I think this is an important distinction in the difference between having healthy skin versus having healthy looking skin. And there can be a big difference in the way that you uh, achieve that. Can you go deeper into that about what, what healthy skin is versus trying to make your skin look healthy? Sure. Well, healthy skin has an intact barrier, and that means that it's allow, we're allowing our skin to do what it was designed to do biologically, which is protect us. And that means that we have to give it all the things that it needs and not the things that it doesn't need. And one of the biggest things that enables the skin to protect us is by keeping that barrier intact. And one of the misguided principles of anti-aging uh, philosophy is that we somehow have to over aggressively stimulate and exfoliate our skin in order to make it look younger. So we use harsh acids, we use chemicals, we use uh, scrubs and mechanical things like, you know, the 
ultrasound uh, devices that you can get to scrub away the top layer of the skin. All the while, we're breaking that skin down. And for the most part, the skin doesn't look any better. We know for a fact that it's not healthier. And my patients have told me over the past 10 years that they don't feel good in their skin. Their skin hurts and it's raw and it's red and it's angry. So then what they do is they put on some sort of a salve or a lovely cream that might feel good, but it does nothing to stop the aging process. Uh, worse yet, they may just go to the cosmetic counter and just find a bunch of makeup to put on that will cover up their red, raw, irritated skin that's bright red. And um, they're not doing anything healthy for their skin, but it's not their fault. I see, you know, every single day I hear and see people trying to do what they're told, which is to over aggressively exfoliate and wage war on their skin, all in an attempt to look younger. And back to what you were saying at the beginning, uh, it is no surprise that people are confused. All you have to do is you walk into any beauty counter or beauty store or even look online at some of the uh, stores, and it's overwhelming, the choices and the options. But all of these products are based on what I consider to be a flawed principle of anti-aging. Well, you know, you you brought something up, all of the, the, the... The techniques that you talked about, you know, are, are, seem to be like what is considered cutting edge. It's what people expect when they have problems. They have skin problems. They're looking for help with their skin. You know, I guess the first thing that comes to mind is a, is a dermatologist, right? Now you are, you're not a dermatologist. You're actually a, an internal, uh, medicine doctor and you have a very, Correct. very different view. Uh, uh, about the skin and treatment than dermatology. So if people are going down that convention, conventional path of, well, if I have problems, let me, let me talk to a dermatologist. Isn't that generally what the, the, the course is to maybe start attacking that, that the skin start, let's start getting brute force to start scrubbing it with things. Let's start putting chemicals <laughs> on it to, to, to make, to, to fix it. It is. And if you step back for a second, like I have as an internist and looked at things from a different point of view. So absolutely, I am not mainstream in this, you know, thought process, but I believe that I'm on the leading edge of changing the way we care for our skin. If you uh, understand that the skin is the largest organ of our entire body, and then you look at the other organs of the body, we would never intentionally irritate or inflame an internal organ of our body, such as our liver with hepatitis or our brain with encephalitis or our joints with arthritis. We would never do that intentionally and call that a state of health. So as an internist, I started to look at the skin partially because I have an anti-aging medical practice where we have focused on the care and the health of the skin for the past 10 years. And I said to myself, this does not make scientific sense to me that we take the largest organ of our body and irritate and inflame it in an attempt to make it look or be younger or healthier. And what I discovered, both because I couldn't tolerate these regimens that I was prescribed, both by dermatologists and beauty counter advisors or sales reps in my office, I couldn't tolerate the retinoids, the harsh glycolics, the scrubs, the peels, etc., a lot of my patients couldn't either. And in talking to over 10,000 women over the past 10 years, I have learned that I'm not alone. The, the challenge for me was to come up with something new, something novel that had never been seen before that would actually deliver real anti-aging results without any irritation or inflammation or what is known in the industry as skin inflammation. And and so you know when you talk about ten thousand people that you've helped, uh, and and you, when you listen to these stories and listen to these backgrounds, um, a lot of people when they think about anti aging, they think about skin. They a lot of people jump directly to uh, surgery, like cosmetic surgery and things like that. But uh, at uh, Vandeveer Center, that was one hundred percent. That's one hundred percent non surgical uh, services, right? 
Correct. So surgery is uh, fantastic if you need to reposition the tissue, whether it's on the face or the body or intern, you know, inside the body. Uh, it changes the architecture of the skin when it's uh, on the face. It does not change other qualities of the skin that define youth. So if you think about a little cherubic baby and their beautiful face and what makes that skin look so young and yummy, it's that it has very small pores. It's got that beautiful glow to it. It's dewy, soft, and it feels like velvet. That is what defines youthful skin. It is not pulled old tight skin. So surgery in and of itself can reposition the skin, but it may not make you look a lot younger or it may look, make you look younger, but I'm focused on the health of that skin that you've repositioned. And so it's similar to doing some sort of a major overhaul in your garden versus a daily maintenance program of your garden. It's very complementary. So good skin care and good skin health is part and parcel with any anti-aging regimen. So in my office, we do a lot of procedures and lasers and even resurfacing that are very defined um, procedures that can help the skin look younger. But then you have to water the garden on a daily basis, if that makes sense. You have to do something on your own that's going to maintain your results, because if you don't, you've kind of wasted your money. Yeah, and I guess the bottom line is the, the, the most talented and skilled plastic surgeon can't give you healthy skin. Correct. Well, a lot of the surgeons now, to their credit, will not only do the laser procedures too, but they might offer you skincare. What they do offer in most of their skincare offerings is aggressive, harsh chemicals and scrubs and acids and peels that I believe are antithetical to healthy skin. That's not how I think we should be treating our skin. If you go back to the principles of internal medicine, we know that inflammation is bad inside our body. All you have to do is look at any newspaper and read the headlines about health, and you see that we are now trying to make lifestyle changes, whether it's diet or exercise or even drugs, to mitigate the damage of inflammation inside our body. Well, we need to do the same thing to the uh, largest organ and the external organ, which is our skin. And we need to do that on a regular daily basis, and we need to stop irritating and inflaming it. We know that the sun and pollution and uh, certain chemicals that we either put on our skin or we inhale through a cigarette, those all cause inflammation of the skin. Additionally, you have other skin diseases like eczema, psoriasis, acne. Those are all inflammatory conditions. We need to significantly and strongly decrease inflammation on the skin. And the way that we do that is through a lifestyle change. Just like we are with our internal organs, we need to do it with our our largest organ, we have to change the way that we're caring for our skin and stop waging war on it, stop stressing it out. Basically, what I've seen over the past 10 years is just an absolute um, overwhelming number of patients trying their best to do what they're told to do for their skin, and their skin is entirely stressed out, it's broken down, it's red, it's painful, it looks inflamed, it does not look healthy, and patients come in just wondering, what have I done? Why is my skin reacting this way? And they just need to understand that they need to completely change the way that they're caring for their skin. You know, and I think that's one of the sad things, and I think, you know, I, I, it's certainly wonderful that we have someone like you uh, in this field is because people, they, they're doing what they think they're supposed to do. They're doing what they're told yes. to do. And, you know, even so outside of, of chronic disease, uh, illness, you talked about lifestyle choices. Uh, you talked about smoking. What are some of the lifestyle choices that people can look at right now outside of what others are telling them to do or put on their skin or to, you know, scrub or acids or anything like that? What are some of those lifestyle choices that they can begin with 
that that can make a, a big difference. Our hydration is really important, and hydration comes from two different sources. Obviously, internal hydration, and we know that people do not drink enough water, and they absolutely drink the wrong kinds of fluids. You know, the sugary or the uh, fruit juices, or a large diet of alcoholic beverages is not great either for the skin. Um, and it, and even the diuretics like coffee. You know, I. Um, finally gotten decaffeinated <laughs> after a lifetime of being a caffeine lover. Um, but in addition, there's topical hydration too. And so it's very important that what you put on your skin after you've showered or cleansed your skin or whatever uh, keeps that hydration in. Uh, and that's related to the quality of the product that you're using. And anyone with dry skin will instantly know what I say when I talk about, you know, does the product stay on your skin or does it just disappear? And, you know, five minutes after you put it on, you don't even know that you've put on a moisturizer. Uh, then the second thing that we do uh, is we don't consume enough nutrients. And our skin is just like any other organ in the body. It needs vital nutrition. One of the most underutilized um, nutrients is zinc. And I have uh, like to have my kids take extra zinc. I take extra zinc. Uh, and it's a vital nutrient for skin health and skin healing. Uh, and our skin is really, if you think about it, just like any other organ, it's in constant repair mode all day, every day, just like our liver, just like our kidneys. It's replacing itself with new cells and new tissue. That process slows down as we age, and it slows down a lot if we're in chronic sun exposure. But it also uh, slows down significantly if we are um intentionally harming our skin. And when I say intentional, I mean it's because of what we're putting on, not because we think we're harming our skin. That's the big misconception here is that my uh, experience with my patients is they're doing everything that they're told to do by the dermatologist or the beauty counter advisor that's prescribing for them these harsh chemicals. And it's not their fault. They just don't understand the harm that they're doing. What they do know is they know that their skin doesn't feel any better and it doesn't look any better at the end of the day. So then they just put the products away or they go back to the dermatologist and they're told, oh, you just need to stick with it. You know, just enough time with this irritant and your skin will get used to it. Well, we would never do that to an internal organ. We would never say, oh, just keep irritating and inflaming it. And don't worry, your, your liver will get used to it. <laughs> that's, that's what causes cirrhosis of the liver. It's crazy if you think about the principle under which we treat our skin and then really the principle that we should be treating our skin. It is. It reminds me of the, I can't remember, the old Billy Crystal Saturday Night Live character that said, you know, he says, it's, it's far more important to look good than it is to feel good. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think that's where a lot of people kind of take that. They, they, they think it's an either or uh, that type of thing, and it's not. Um, you know, we talked about like psoriasis, uh, acne. Uh, eczema. And I know, you know, I, I have teenage boys that, that uh, have acne medicine. And I tell you, you just crack that open and it about burns your eyeballs out. Uh, this, this, this chemical uh, type stuff. And, and that's really kind of the, the, the core, the foundation. It sounds like uh, of your philosophy, almost the, you know, obviously the anti of, of that. And I guess what kind of drove you to, uh, create the the Vonte skincare line. So let's talk a little bit about that. About what is it that is would be different? The, the different approach that you have, and obviously, you know, we've talked about your philosophy about how this stuff is. You know, why would we attack our own skin in order to make it look good? And I think that's the key point: is is look good and not necessarily feel good. Uh, right. You know, what is it that uh, about the the Volante skincare? Um, and you know how you put that together that uh, incorporates your philosophy uh, about how this sh should uh, be working and how it should be used to to get not just healthy looking skin but truly healthy skin. So it all I had my aha moment about three years ago, and I was pondering a new skincare line that someone wanted to bring into my office. And I was looking at it saying, you know what, this is just the same old dogma, the same old stuff, retinoids, 
alpha hydroxy acids, glycolics, a scrub. I was like, this is ridiculous. There's nothing new on the market. Nobody's thinking about this differently. At the same time, I looked at myself and I looked and I said, you know what? Most of our conditions of the skin are inflammatory, like just what you mentioned, psoriasis, eczema, acne, actinic keratosis, uh, vitiligo, you name it. Those are inflammatory conditions. How do we, how are we told to treat those inflammatory conditions is entirely antithetical to how we're told to treat internal uh, inflammation. So if you have arthritis, what do we do? We suggest that you take an anti-inflammatory in whatever form that takes, whether it's a prescription or over the counter. If you have a dermatitis or you have, let's say, acne, what do we do? We give you an inflammatory agent, not an anti-inflammatory, but we give you Retin-A and we give you a, a significant uh, alpha hydroxy, like a strong glycolic, or we might give you benzoyl peroxide or whatever it is. It's a chemical pro-inflammatory agent. And we're t- somehow the disconnect and how we treat that skin is so different. So I stepped back and at that aha moment, I said, you know what? We need to be treating the skin with an anti-inflammatory agent. And our skin doesn't just need it if you have these uh, inflammatory conditions. If you think about it, aging is really just inflammation. It's just accelerated inflammation and our body just eventually breaks down. So in my clinic, we're focused on anti-aging and mostly a about, I don't want to say vanity, but it's more about how the skin looks and really how the the overall skin health, like a condition like acne or uh, psoriasis. So even though it's just anti-aging, it still needs to follow the same principles of internal medicine on the skin. So we need to decrease inflammation in the skin in order to make it look and act younger. So I challenged myself to find that solution. And it really did take a couple of years of bench work in my office, literally combining ingredients that I knew were potent anti-inflammatory agents and finding those that would be most synergistic with each other so that when you put them together, it was one plus one equals three, not two, and finding a way that we could somehow substantially and immediately decrease inflammation in the skin. And what I found is not just... I created a blend, a patent pending blend that is the most potent topical anti-inflammatory available in my opinion, Um, but it also works immediately. If you put it on the skin in any form, whether it's in a serum or a cream or even just straight on the skin, it immediately knocks out that inflammation. And what that allows the skin to do is to do what it's supposed to do. So it's not fighting that inflammation all the time. If you think about the skin as just a regular old workhorse trying to do its job of protecting us and growing new cells and everything, and here we are just you know throwing acid and scrub and peels and all sorts of things at it, Basically, we're trying to flog it while it's trying to do its own job. And we're actually breaking it down. We're making it weaker. We're making it expend energy protecting itself from our insults when really what it should be doing is it should be rejuvenating, creating that. We need to provide what it needs to create that healthy environment so that it can reward you with the beautiful, youthful glow. Whether you're a man or a woman, you're a teenager. My sons use this product. I have two teenage boys. It doesn't matter your age or stage of life. Your skin still has the same job. Our skin never gets to go into retirement and it never gets to take a summer break. You know, nine... Uh, seven days a week, its responsibility is to protect us and we need to do what's best for it. And nobody's been looking at this from a different perspective before. So that's what I challenged myself to do. And that blend is called seven vitae. And that's seven ingredients that I consider vital when vitae means life in Latin that I believe are uh, essential for the life of the skin. And, you know, you, you mentioned a very powerful word, word immediately. And we live in a microwave society. 
people, I want it now. Right. And, and it's one of, I guess, one of the reasons that when people are faced with this, because it's something that people don't, if they have a problem, especially with acne or, or the things on the, on the face, they want a, a, an answer quickly. They want a solution quickly. And I think it, it's probably one of the big reasons that people turn to and spend so much money on cosmetics or makeup versus real uh, treatments. Would, would that be the case? Absolutely. I have a couple of thoughts. I don't know about you, but I've actually been impatient waiting for something to heat up in the microwave. And then I sit there and I say to myself, oh my gosh, Elizabeth, you've got to be kidding. You're impatient for a microwave now. That's how instant we want our results. Secondly, I've been uh, told a statistic that if a website does not load in three seconds on your mobile device, people will click out of it. And that is a scary fact. I mean, three seconds and we are moved on to the next thing. So in my practice, I had carried several lines and I still do because there's going to be people that don't believe me or want a different option. And that's totally fine. So this is not that there's only one solution for everyone, but it's about educating and about changing a paradigm. Um, the uh, So I apologize. In my office, I have lines that I'm told that I should tell my patients, you have to wait 90 to 120 days to see a result. And during that time, you're supposed to repurchase the product at least once, if not twice. So let's just say that the product is modestly priced in a doctor's office. And that would be, you know, 50 to $100 for a product. And then you have to buy it two or three times in order to see a result. And you are going to click out of a website in three seconds because it doesn't load. Imagine me telling a patient, oh, you just have to wait 120 days to see a result. So when I created Volante, I wanted something that they could see and feel after one application of product. And so that was my challenge as well, was instant results with a long-term benefit. And all of the products in Volante are designed to provide you with that one application, significant change in the skin. And we have seen it again and again. Right. And, and there's a lot of people, you know, you, when you talk about, let's say you say, you know, 50, a hundred dollars every 30, 90 days, whatever. I'm sure there's women that, that spend way more than that on, on makeup because it does give them that instant change. Right. Yeah. I, I'm a big believer in makeup. I love it. I wear it almost every day. I think it's a great tool and I think it's great. I used makeup for decades to cover my cystic acne and my cystic acne scars because I couldn't find anything that worked for me. And the things that I did use on my skin with the traditional dogma just made it more red, more inflamed, more painful. And so um, people spend a lot of money covering up problems that really can be solved, uh, if not entirely, I would say in large part by decreasing the inflammation and letting the skin do what it's supposed to do for you. You know, one of the things I find interesting, I think, is probably so uh, probably one of the most powerful things, a background that I want to bring up about you is that you're an artist. You you actually have a a bachelor's degree in art. You're a painter. And I guess, uh, you, you know, you've talked about and listening to you how. It's not like makeup is not a the, the right choice. You just said, you know, how much you, you, you like makeup. But rather than making it a covering agent, it's something that, that can be applied to healthy skin for even greater effect, right? Absolutely. And I I am a painter. I don't get to paint a lot lately, but I do have that degree in painting. And for the last 10 years, my canvas of choice has been the faces and bodies of my patients. And I can tell you without a doubt that a beautiful canvas in the form of healthy, beautiful skin makes any makeup product look better. It makes any procedure performed in my office or any aesthetic physician's office last longer, look better, etc. Um, it's really a powerful thing and a, a beautiful canvas. I can tell you, Jack, that getting a compliment on beautiful skin, which is not an uncommon occurrence for me now, 
is so powerful. I want everyone to feel the power of having beautiful, healthy skin, youthful, glowing skin, skin that when you touch it, it feels like velvet. It looks and acts vibrant. That is an, a very powerful feeling, whether you're a man, a woman, a child, you know, like a teen like ours or um, beyond. It really doesn't matter. It's a, it's a tool that we can give people now that will allow them, whether they want to put on makeup, whether they want to do nothing to their skin, they want to get surgery, they don't want surgery, they want a laser, they don't want a laser. It almost doesn't matter because becomes irrelevant if you're maintaining this beautiful canvas and not breaking it down it will reward you and it's going to make a difference and i believe it can be a real life-changing difference well it is and and, you know it's such a huge huge uh decision you know for for people to make even though you know and i want to circle back around to what we talked about at the top, uh, about how overwhelming, the, the overwhelming amount of options there are and, and the choices people have because, you know, faster, better, cheaper, they're all out there. And when you, you can't walk through a mall in this country without somebody grabbing you and rubbing something on you that's going to make you <laughs> right. And, and whether you go to a CVS and even the grocery store, everywhere has an aisle that says skin care. So let's just talk a little bit about those overwhelming options and some decisions that people have to make that the, you know, two ninety nine uh jar of goo probably isn't going to be the best option for them. Yeah, you know, it's funny when you said two ninety nine, I was also thinking two hundred and ninety nine dollars because there is that range uh for a same size jar of goo. Uh, you can literally go from $2.99 to $299 and beyond, way beyond that. Um, and there's no value, no matter the price, in having a product that sits in your drawer or worse yet, just gets thrown away. Um, I've done it many times myself. Most of the women I know have drawers full of half-used products. Uh, that are really just hopes and dreams in a jar or bottle. Uh, and they get disappointed and they get overwhelmed. And I would be surprised if there was anyone that wasn't overwhelmed by the uh, vast array of choices in the mall and in the drugstore. And I was in a grocery store over the weekend that's been newly remodeled and their skincare department looks gorgeous. And I was there to, you know, buy something for the 4th of July, like hamburger buns or something. I can't remember. And I'm just stopped dead in my tracks by this beautiful display of uh, not just makeup, but skincare. So all of a sudden now our, you know, big box retailer for groceries is in the skincare business. And, you know, you have to say to yourself, well, what business does a grocery store have being in the skincare business? And then really, if you look at the market as a whole, who is coming out with something new that is truly new? It seems to me, because I I study this a lot, everybody's coming out with a new Retin-A. You know, it's time-release Retin-A, or it's a kinder, gentler Retin-A, or it's not going to damage your skin as much. I I read that in one pamphlet. I love that, as as much. Uh, That's that's remarkable. And I was like, wow, not going to damage your skin as much. How lovely that they're now admitting that it's damaging to the skin. And, uh, or a new scrub or a new peel, or it's just a new way of putting your peel on. And now all of a sudden it's supposed to be something, you know, new and fancy and entirely different. So what do we do? We buy it again. <laughs> and then we find that it doesn't do anything different than the last 32 products that we bought with the same promise and the same ingredients. And so, um, it is overwhelming. It's discouraging. I find patients get, you know, very, very, uh, skeptical. You know, you tell them about a product that's really no different and it's just got a new shiny package and they're like, yeah, okay, I think I've heard that. And then they decide, well, can I afford to waste some money? And then they might put the money down to buy the product. So, 
the challenge was to, you know, to get away from the traditional ingredients in dermatology, the traditional regimens in dermatology, and really pull back and look at it from a whole new vantage point. Yeah, and I think that right there is is you know, one. It's why I consider you an influencer and and, and an inv- innovator in in this field, and it's so much uh, deeper than I, I ever imagined. And you know, I I know it's hard to believe, but I don't spend a lot of time with cosmetics and skincare. I'm not a slave to this to the skincare, which that would they, make you a normal man. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it, it, it could be. In fact, probably some of the skincare you see at the grocery store that probably could have gone on those hamburger buns that you talked about. <laughs> um, but uh, it, but I think I think it really is tremendous because I've seen so many people that that, you know, it, that yes, vanity is important. I mean, people they want to look better, and that's one of the most important things to a lot of people, and it's and it's understandable. But the, the, there are so many people that are affected in so many ways. That's not just about vanity. It affects their lives. It affects the way that they conduct their their relationships. It's th- their confidence level, and the fact that you go above and beyond just a looking good and 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 a cosmetic on the outside. I think is tremendous. That that you're affecting so many lives. Uh, on so many deeper levels and and I, I you know want to thank you so much for sharing uh, this with everyone and going deep you know behind the one the science and also to bring up you know against you kind of talk about what people are used to seeing that the conventional wisdom of what they think is the right thing to do and I think you make a very compelling case that maybe it's not the right thing to do for your skin. If I may share an anecdote with you, um, both personal and then professional, uh, I hid my skin for decades. I was ashamed of it. It hurt. I would cry. I would not only cover it up, but I'd cover up my life. I mean, it really, really held me back. And I have to say, skin is emotional. If you've ever, you know, seen someone with psoriasis or a significant acne problem, it becomes an emotional problem as well. And so there's a tremendous healing that can take place when your skin changes. And it's a transformation Uh, The other thing is a couple of weeks ago, I was in Los Angeles meeting with a new vendor that uh, is going to carry the product. And the gentleman had significant red skin. And he said, he listened to my story. He listened and he felt the products. And he said, you know, I've been in the industry for 30 years and I've never heard the story before ever about inflammation. He said, you can tell I have red skin and I've always had problems with my skin. And he said, I can't wait to try this. And I saw him two days later after one application of the serum, and he looked like a different man. The redness was gone, and he said, I cannot believe this. In my lifetime, I have never had skin that wasn't red. And he said, this is unbelievable. And he's gone through two bottles of serum and it has become an advocate saying, I now have the skin that I always wanted to have. And it, it's emotional for him. And this is a gentleman. This is not, you know, a, a, I don't, at the risk of sounding very harsh, it's not a vain woman that just wants a little wrinkles reduced. This is someone with a significant skin uh, disorder or dis-ease, if you will. And there's something now topically that can change his skin and change his life and change his world experience. Because when he goes out into the world and doesn't have bright, beet red skin, the world is going to reflect a different uh, response to him. And that's the un- unfortunate truth, Jack, is that we do judge people by their appearance. What most people don't realize is that their skin health plays into their overall appearance in a much greater way than they're probably aware of. And that's really what we can affect to change with the change in the paradigm. Yeah, that is just just tremendous because it is. It's it's far more than the aesthetics and it, it's it, 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 it's just the way it is changing lives. Now Volante skincare is not something that has just been hidden out there for years. This is something that is just, uh, you know, making its way and becoming available to uh, 
people in, in all parts of the, uh, the of, of the country, uh, the, the world, yeah. uh, and and uh, you know what is the best way for people to find out more about this? Because it's not something they're going to pick up off the CVS shelves, and, and it's and it's just now rolling out there. Correct. Uh, it's just launched, and you can find us at VolanteSkincare.com, and you can also purchase on that site, and we're also on Amazon.com, and we're just rolling out both online and brick-and-mortar and television retailers uh, nationwide and globally. Well, I can tell you to keep an eye out and an ear out because you're going to hear Volante Skincare. Uh, I can guarantee it because it really is the the, the work that, that you've done is, is revolutionary. And, and, and I think uh, when people see what this can do, it, it really is going to be uh, tremendous. So thank you so much for coming on today and sharing this information uh, and, you know, having a, a huge impact on, on people's lives. Thank you, Jack. I really appreciate you letting me share the story. All right. Fantastic. Folks, there you have it. Volante skincare.com. Uh, we'll have the, uh, the link on the show post. Uh, and until next time on influencers radio, remember you are the only real game changer. You've been listening to Influencers Radio. To get all past shows and updates on future shows, visit InfluencersRadio.com today. Or follow us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Influencers Radio.